Welcome back. Anti-apartheid activist and businessman Mkuseli Jack is back in politics. He's launching a residence movement next month in Port Elizabeth, and he's joining me now to tell me why it is that he felt this needed to happen at this point. It would seem, Mkuseli Jack, your journey through politics is just never done. Uh, many of us thought you had moved on and left that behind you and were in the business of business, but you are making a return. Why? Well, you know, I have been a spectator watching the unending circus, political circus happening at the, my doorstep here, let alone the national one. And uh, as a result of that, I just uh, persuaded myself very strongly and easily for that matter to say, come on, man, let me say some, let me do something. It cannot go on like this. And what form will this something that you are doing take? Um, a residence movement, what does that look like? No, it's a, we are going to uh, get uh, to directly to the residents of the metro and persuade them to put their vote to us in every ward and uh, allow us to govern the metro and govern it properly and make the metro work and make the city work and function. What makes you believe that the, the, the time is opportune now for this kind of movement? I mean, we've seen in terms of political parties, right? Uh, at the last elections, we had the addition of the United Front uh, of the Eastern Cape um, that became a player there. We saw, you know, the AIC. We've had an AIC person acting as mayor in this vacuum since December last year. So what will make this residence movement succeed where other political parties have failed? Now, this is not opportunism as a consequence of the political anarchy and uh, pandemonium taking place in the existing uh, political parties. This is a matter of taking responsibility of salvaging whatever is left in this metro. From the look of things, it, the pace of destruction is so ferocious that we have no choice with a group of honest people of integrity, discipline, principled men and women, young and old, black and white. We have worked together for some time and we created a nucleus uh, uh, leadership so that it gels as it goes ahead to build this movement which we will un and which we will roll out into the metro and, uh, and, and get, to get the metro working. At the moment, as things stand, the metro is really reeling from one crisis to the other, not only merely crises of, uh, of intellectual or theoretical uh, basis, but these are life-threatening uh, 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 kind of uh, chaos and, uh, and factors that are affecting the voters. It is the agency of the matter is such that we cannot postpone this any further than this. We have to step in and talk to the people because the danger has been going on for the last uh, 10 years nonstop. And this, the city is really, if you come here, uh, uh, at this rate, come 2021, by the time of voting, uh, there will be very few companies that are, are making profits in this city. There will be very few people gainfully employed. The majority of people will be standing on the sidelines because factories are going to close. There's the water crisis, the electricity is driving companies to the wall, let alone the people that are drinking dirty water and the sewage that is piling all over the place. Yeah. In fact, I wanted, you to, I wanted to ask you to uh, color it for me and put more color to it in as far as the impact of not having a mayor since the ousting of Monga Bobani in December last year. What's been the impact of that? Well, you know, uh, it's funny in Port Elizabeth, in this Nelson Mandela metro, we are governed in, a, if you like, a sort of style, okay? where the ANC is uh, uh, clandestinely uh, leading. <laughs> I mean, this is a liberation movement of more than 100 years. It abacks on childish thing of saying, no, we are not governing. But actually, they are governing the place. I mean, Bishop isn't helping the situation. For the start of the decline started with Bishop bringing the so-called administrators, 
which came here to do the function of bishop rather than to serve the people of this metro. Now, there is no question they are busy now doing that. Thanks God that the majority of the people they have been approaching, they don't want to be used as stooges and puppets by them to come and cover because they, what they want now, instead of uh, having a mayor, allowing the situation, the, the municipality to be governed according to the rules and the laws of the country, they work their own ways, which, uh, uh, you know, in, I would put it in Trosama Solo. Oh, no. Right in the middle of making uh, one of his points there. We seem to have lost Mkuseli Jack. Uh, he was talking to us from Port Elizabeth, talking about why uh, he's coming back into active politics. Uh, and it does seem that we have lost that connection to him. But I think we got enough uh, out of that conversation with him. Uh, he was telling us about what, he, what has prompted him and prodded him uh, into action. I do believe that we have Mkuseli Jack back with us. So, uh, um, Kuseli, let me not waste any further time. Let me ask you a question two questions wrapped in one. Um, yeah. Talk to me about the yeah. spirit that you are trying to rekindle because it seems to me you are harking back to the spirit of the days of PEPCO, um, you know, uh, the, the, the spirit of the days of the UDF, the million signature uh, campaigns uh, that, you know, that you were in the thick of things at, at that particular time. Does that spirit still exist do residents of the metro see that the stakes are that high and linked to that the issue of unity of purpose and cohesion because you know many are lamenting that there is not much cohesion for instance among the various constituencies within Nelson Mandela Bay particularly when you talk about um, areas of the northern suburbs precisely uh, well, we, we are going to restore the dignity of the people of this metro. The first thing is to make sure that the toilets in all the public uh, places are working and the roads are fixed, the portals are done away with, etc., etc. Uh, the way we have gone about to test the public opinion has given us the confidence that, yes, we can and we are going to restore the good, great days and to bring back the vision of the freedom is totally lost, totally lost, where leaders don't even think that it's an obligation to serve the people. They are there to serve the, the clerk, of, you know, from Bishop or from Lutuli House, nothing to do with the people. Hence, the state of, of affairs are so pathetic. And fortunately, fortunately, with our own analysis of the situation, with my team, it's a dynamic team. It's a whole group of new people mostly. The, the, the criteria is no political knowledge, theoretical gurus and ideological ideologues. Ah, ah. We want people who are practical and pragmatic, who are going to get things down and turn the city around and make it the best city that it ever was. Because this is the Detroit of Africa. We are going to... Now, we, even the motor industry is being stripped out of us here. And we are at risk of losing the existing companies here. The breweries, they fight with the municipality about water. I mean, that thing could be closed if they, these people don't get water. So, These are the kinds of things that have sparked us to action. So as a parting shot, um, Kuseli Jack, let me ask you for your own analysis of the anatomy of this disaster, really, that has become Nelson Mandela Bay. Mkabe uh, Sindlekiana gives that particular uh, perspective in his book, uh, Anatomy of the ANC in Power, and talk about, uh, talks about oligarchic uh, tendencies um, that came into play within the local governance, uh, business interests in Nelson Mandela Bay, and links that to factional politics of the ANC. But what's your assessment? What happened in Nelson Mandela Bay, Mkuselejek? How did it go from the moment, um, you know, when it elected its first mayor? in 1995 to, to, to this, I don't know what to call it, this gridlock, this endless gridlock that you find yourselves in today? Well, it started, Kanwim, uh, you know, came in small step by step, you know. 
with uh, small things like when Naiba was, uh, as Gajana says in his book, which is really the best thing for anyone who wants to know what has been happening, is that's a book to read. By, by tolerating devious behavior because a person you like him, this is a kind of thing that we want to stop. If I do something wrong, there must be no excuses of defending me. Expose me and correct it and we go forward. So slowly it came at the time of Naeba, who initially was a very, very good man. I was very proud of him. He, he, was, he made us all proud when he was doing But things went wrong when he got out. And then he didn't want to tolerate the other people that came in. And slowly... Assisted by the bishop administration, he, he rooted out people who were doing the right things, like the mayors that were there before. From there onward, it was just a free-for-all mm. to the state whereby we became a criminal city that is run by political syndicates. Mm. Strong words. Thank you for that. Thank you for your insights, um, Kuseli Jack. They call him Da Kusta there uh, in Nelson Mandela Bay, talking about a situation that is, no matter where you stand politically, it's, it's an unmitigated disaster, uh, what has become of governance in Nelson Mandela Bay. If you don't believe me, visit Nelson Mandela Bay for a few days and see for yourself what's been happening there, how that city has been in gridlock, um, basically, for the last few years.